Hey everyone, uh, today I'm gonna be actually going through comments that have been made on my shorts. Uh, there's quite a few in there and I wanna go through them because there have been a lot of comments that, well, there's been repeats and honestly, there's actually been some that have been longer than the actual script of the short itself uh, in response to either a mistake that I made or just in general discussion of the lore. And there have been some comment wars in there. Oh boy, there is there there's comment wars in in the chat. Like, woo. but I wanted to go through and respond to some of the comments uh, directly interacting with some of the things that you guys have said. I want to do this on a regular basis because people are passionate about Warhammer 40K. I'm passionate about it, and I really want to talk more about it overall. So let's get into it. This one is on uh, servitors in. Um, in like in the body horror short. Okay, so it's not 100% accurate that they just round up the rabble to make servitors. The majority of servitors that were once actually people were criminals and hive scum. The people that who would shank you for a better breeze or shoot you in your spot for a line at the food cart. The rest are made from backroom bodies and clones. A vast majority of servitors are grown though. And these are two comments that are on that. And that, that came up quite a bit. The fact that it's a vac grown human doesn't really make it any less evil or any less bad. And the other thing when it comes to criminals, let's be very, very honest. The way 40K is introduced, that paragraph that GW has, it explicitly says that the regime that is the empire of man, the Imperium of man, is the most brutal and harsh regime that could ever exist in history. And those kind of regimes do not care for what reason you are a criminal. Take an example for Andor. He is living in a totalitarian regime, much like the Imperium of Man. Not, I'll be not as like harsh as the Imperium of Man, but just tone up what Andor and the Empire are and put that to 40,000, <laughs> haha. Um, but you have Andor who's walking along the beach. There is some people that are running away from beach troopers, or they call it shore troopers. And he happens to be walking along and he's a little bit worried because like there's people running around and a shore trooper stops him and says, why do you look suspicious? I'm like, I'm just trying to get where I'm going. Well, why are you running? I, I, I wasn't running, I'm walking. Stay here. I, I need to get where I'm going. You stay here. And then he's, He's taken into, uh, like, and he's captured, he's arrested, and he's put into jail for six months for very, very stupid charges. But that same thing can happen in the Imperium of Man, and more than likely happens more frequently. So to say someone's a criminal and, oh yeah, they're just a criminal, who cares? It's a fascist totalitarian regime every day you were a criminal unless of course you were following the letter of the law and even if you were following the letter of the law you will you'll get servitorized until then your legs shall be disabled and your food supply shall be limited to one and a half rations per week we appreciate your understanding i don't understand anything too bad next one warhammer sounds like a cheap ripoff of dune Yes, Warhammer is kind of a ripoff of everything. It's not like they were very, you know, open to just saying like, oh, we'll make our own stuff. No, they stole from Dune, they stole from Starship Troopers, uh, especially the original novelization for Space Marines. They, and they tried to trademark Space Marines off of Starship Troopers. That didn't work out. Um, you get Star Wars, you get Star Trek, especially when it comes to the town federations of multiple aliens. Um, 1980s British conservatives. I mean, Mag Uruk Thraka. Mag Uruk Thraka. Mag Uruk Thraka. Um, and Halo Covenant because of Tau. So 40K is just an amalgamation of everything sci fi, just kind of shoved in together. So uh, next up, uh, I call bullshit on this. Uh, literally 50% of space marines are traitorous to a faction significantly worse than the greater good. And I think this is on the no space marines for the greater good. And 
Yes. Um, generally, though, when space marines fall to chaos, it is for two reasons. It is one, they are being directly kind of forced into being around warp energy. And warp energy is just emotions and magic, essentially. And that is infecting them in their own brains. So it will twist how they feel about things. They want to protect humanity or they want to fight for power. And it will put that to 10 million. So they fall because they still feel like they are protecting humanity, but they're doing it in a way and they're given power to do so. Uh, the other way is typically because their Primarch has fallen and it is very, very well established that when a Space Marine is in the presence of their Primarch, they can do nothing but kneel. They can only really answer to their Primarch. They can't say no. And the ones that do, well, in the Horus Heresy, they got Istvan. I think it was three or five. One of three or five of Istvan. Um, but all of the loyalists that were left in the Traitor Legions were murked on that planet, except for Lyra Chad Rylanor. But yeah, so the greater good, if you have a little wormy boy that's going in there and just trying to understand your mind, it won't work to understand and try and convert a Space Marine that way, unless, of course, their Primarch actually joined the greater good first. So. If the Tau maybe trade Trazin, the body of you know, Onva, maybe you know, a couple other significant players, give them a couple like old school models for his uh, diorama of the Damocles Gulf. Maybe the Tau can get Clone Fulgrim, and then some, you know, odd one or two chapters might join them, like the what is it, the Death Birds and, or the Death Eagles and the Sons of the Phoenix? No. They might be suspiciously joining the Tau afterwards. Who knows? Um, but yes, Space Marines will join Chaos more likely because of that warp shenanigans that's in their mind. All right, these. this is a series of comments um, whew, uh, from the Flare short. Uh, nah, that's just Steve. The first image is just Steve. There's no Necron Flare there. It's just Steve the Guardsman. Steve is just a normal guard like everyone else. Oh, you mean Steve, he's a guardsman, highly decorated one, but I have seen him get shot 30 times before. Yeah, I didn't know about this this meme before. I actually, I don't know why or how I missed this, this joke somehow. Uh, but yeah, Steve is a fantastic guy. I don't know why I put him in the Flare episode. Uh, I'm sorry that I used the wrong image. Uh, next time that I make a Flare episode, I'll make sure Steve's not in there. He doesn't represent anything that goes on with the Flares, so. Um, but he'll show up in the uh, maybe a guardsman short at some point because in his proper place because Steve is a fantastic guy to have around. He is a hero of the Imperium. This one is specifically from my salt for the salt gods. Uh, no melee for the Tau. Cope. Yeah, yeah, it is cope. No, I'm trying to cope. I am trying to cope with the nerf that they gave Farsight for no good reason. This one is on the bureaucracy is worse than war. You're more likely to die. So POV, what it feels like to live in Germany. I don't know what it's like to live in Germany. I There was a lot of German exchange students in my high school. Um, and the most that I know about German culture is beer, uh, schnitzel, uh, sausages, and also don't wave the German flag outside of sports events because then you might be prideful of your nation and be national. Um, so I kind of feel bad because there was a lot of comments uh, of people saying this about Germany. And, wow. But I think the largest joke that I've seen about Germany is you do your forklift job and you go back and you do a forklift simulator. So who knows? Next up. So this is one on the Every Space Marine chapter. All right, so the explanation of the space wolves being furries. Their gene papa selected people from a specific planet. That planet was colonized back when humanity understood genetics, but the planet was terrible, so the humans had to adapt to live on it. So they took the genes of the animals on the planet and spliced it into themselves. Fast forward a while and they became animals, either from mutation, radiation, uh, that is the warp, and or chaos, or other reasons. 
Now this is a failed colony, so the next batch of people get sent over to the colony, no big deal, but for some reason, these giant wolves are friendly to the colonists and protect them from all the other terrible sheep. Anyways, for some reason, the genetics mixed with the colonists, and for some reason, Fenris is the only place that new space wolves can be recruited from to shorten, their, shorten the story. One, if you have new colonists showing up and the old colonists are all wolves. Sus. A uh, heist film, this is Sans. A uh, heist film with Trazen and the Marines that steal crap would be funny as hell. Lol, like trying to steal some anti chaos weapon or artifact from chaos and they have to work together to pull off the heist. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Any more Trazen stories or any more Trazen lore it would just be fantastic. Infinite and the Divine is one of the best books in the Black Library. Or at least my, for me personally, it is one of the better books. Um, but my tier list for books in 40k is kind of mostly Necron top heavy. So yeah, more Trazen, please. Please, pretty please. Killer Joy, this is on the no space marines for the greater good. Not enough gold, not enough skulls, cringe. Raven guard to the Tau just before death. Ha. Uh, I don't know if I have another comment on here that um, I talk about <laughs> this part, but yes, I did say heart failure, but it was heart's failure. And it was the Raven Guard that uh, after the whole stress of having their mind read by the Nagi, uh, did induce his own cardiac arrest on both of his hearts. Um, but guaranteed it was for, you know, this poetry is not dank enough. Cringe, dead. Next up, imagine a story where soon after their kill a space marine on site policy is put in place, a space marine who was MIA decided to join when he walked up to them. They didn't listen and started firing, leading to the space marine to kill them all, and both sides' stereotypes of each other remain unchanged. Ironic tragedy in pure 40k. Yes, this is the way to actually do Grimdark for the Tau, is the fact that they are trying to progress, they are trying to do what is best, at all times, but that best actually leads to the worst possible consequences. Good, in, the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions and having the Tao just constantly trying to do the best, but have it just be work, work, work out worse and worse for them is the real way to do like a good tragic story and a good, good, good grim dark story for the Tao. Next up, how long can I last against them if I did it with them? So this is talking about the Sisters of Silence and um, probably they wouldn't even get near you in the first place. So you wouldn't last in the first place. So, whoops, sorry. All right, uh, this comment is actually the start of a comment war that I actually wanted to get into on a couple specific Tau um, points. Um, this is on the Inquisitor thinks that the Imperium is um, you know, takes the, the tower better than the Imperium. Uh, it may be, but it is subtle and more positive in its outlook. It is what I like about the Tau. Yes, they are nice and good, but the Ethereals are smart, shady, and Warcast know where to pull the strings. So it's easy for them to manipulate the other race or, uh, races to or facilitate assimilation. Either way, like humans, they let them worship the Emperor whom, while not happy about it, would be more bad about the fact that his Imperium has turned into something that makes the idea of joining a Xenos Empire look good in the eyes of the people that he loves. Uh, and then there is a comment that goes on here. And this is why people hate the Tau. They don't fit in. It's like going to a horror theme park and finding a well-manicured garden in the middle of the walk. No tricks, no gimmicks, no skeletons inside a closet or corpse under the yard. Nope, just a regular old plain and well-manicured backyard that doesn't fit in with the theme. So, I don't agree with anyone that tries to say the Tau shouldn't be in 40K. But the problem I see a lot of people uh, and a lot of people that are Tau fans have is that the way that they are now being forced into fitting into the theme, into the setting, is actually more detrimental to the setting as a whole. That theme park analogy, I kind of get it, but you need that contrast. You need contrast to make your, your miniatures really pop, and so that way you can actually read what is happening. Otherwise, it's just a mess of darkness. You might as well just dump a bunch of Nolan oil all over them. Well, most people do anyway, but you need contrast. You need edge highlights to really pop your uh, miniatures out when they're on the tabletop. And the same thing can go with the setting because otherwise it becomes very monotone. 
But the theme park idea, what how I think the Tao are better off going is that they're not a part of the theme park yet. What they are is the small child that was expecting to go to Disney World. And they are excited. They are so excited to go to Epcot Center. They're really excited to see Pirates of the Caribbean, see all the cast members. They are so hyped to be here and to see everything and make friends with everyone that they see in front of them. And they walk in and they step in a pile of dog poop. Okay, well, that kind of sucks, but you know, you move on with your day. You go up and you see Aladdin and he has his little signature book. I don't know if anyone's been to Disney World, but he had a little signature book. And the kid runs up to go to Aladdin and say, sign my signature book. And Aladdin just backhands him. And then he goes further in and he's just starting, slowly breaking down that naivety that he had of everything being good. And he's still trying, maybe, you know, one or two kids joins up with him. Maybe one or two of the rides are okay, but like he, he goes and the food is making him nauseous. The everything is just slowly like degrading and he's just becoming more and more inwards until he becomes a part of the theme park. So that is, I think, a better way of doing it instead of it being, oh, they're mind control, oh, they're sterilization, which I have two points against that. Um, but I very much disagree with saying anything that shouldn't belong. Um, and the salt that a lot of people have, and this actually came up in there, is people are saying, oh, it's never, the Tao fans are so salty that they're good guys are becoming evil. No, most of the general salt is Imperium fans who just don't like the Tao. And, and most Tao fans, what they're unhappy with is not because that the good guys are becoming evil, it's that the way that it's being done is very ham-fisted and terribly done. There are plenty of ways to actually explore it. I think exploring the caste system and the rigid control that the Tao have potentially over their like Xenos races, while their life may be comfortable, there is still a sense of control that's there. You go in for your yearly checkup to make sure that your health is right, and they give you a regimen of making you healthier overall, but they've taken your DNA and they are trying to make sure that like they have a Tinder app that is trying to hook you up with people who your DNA is compatible with. But the ethereals know that the chaos that chaos exists and is trying to do what they can to ensure that psychers aren't a present threat to the Tau Empire. So they are purposely using the Tinder app to make sure that you are paired with someone where your genetics won't make a psyker. Unfortunately, you fall in love with someone who is not a part of that. And you have to fight against that idea for love. And at the end, you have this beautiful child out in the, the boondocks with this solar punk farm. And this child comes out and with glowing eyes. And then the head starts twisting in on itself and the blood litter rips itself out and starts cutting apart the, your wife. And then the entire planet falls to chaos. That is a good way of actually highlighting one, the subtle horror of a controlled system and also the why that control system works in the first place, because that exists in in the Imperium anyway. That control, they have the controls, but they're very bad at it at this point because everything has degraded. But the like the Inquisitors have absolute power and innocence proves nothing, but it's for a reason because they can't get anything wrong. But sterilization, there's only been one genocide of humans and that was the Force Sphere's expansion after the greater good saved the Force Sphere's expansion after they had created the Star Tide Nexus and the Tau, the species Tau, the Fire Warriors, killed off all the auxiliaries because they held them responsible for actually creating the warp and being psychic abilities and having more psychic abilities. So they genocided them out of legitimate fear and they are now on the other side of the Star Tide Nexus, not allowed to work with auxiliary. The other thing too, you say sterilization of human planets, but if you actually look at statistics of populations on Earth, when people go from a third world country, like style of living, which a hive city definitely would be, or even a mid tier, imperial world would be because you're tithing out all your materials off planet um like as soon as you go from third world and start having developed you notice that birth rates significantly don't go down and you have the population pyramid that starts going like this because when you 
are not worried that your child isn't going to make it to adulthood, you don't have as many children. It's just an innate thing of what we do, unfortunately. So that just happens without the other sterilization part. And then the brainwashing thing, and you'll notice I talked about, you know, how space marines have this innate connection to their primarchs and they will fall to chaos because their primarch fell to chaos. It seems like it's the same thing with the ethereals and the Tau, uh, but to a lesser degree. So that I don't mind because it's just a, a method of like, getting things to work together and may have a little bit, but it's not direct mind control and it's only been in one or two places. So yeah. Oh, and the sterilization thing, only two places in the potential lore have mentioned it. Both of them are extremely suspect and pretty much World War II propaganda poster level um, things. So Death Watch, a uh, company that was preparing to fight the Tau and needed to demonize them, an easier way to say than sterilize them and a Malding Imperial officer who was upset that Tao had won at the end of Dawn of War II. So take his word, salt, grain of salt. Um, what it, this is on the, um, this is on the about Tao one. <laughs> I'm talking about Tao again, oh God. Uh, what is the best shooting army then? Uh, question coming from someone who only cares about the war. So on the tabletop, uh, I've actually played against Imperial Guard and their shooting is mean comparatively to mine. Um, but it's mostly because the Tau hit on four ups. So when you roll a, a six sided dice, if you roll a four, five or six, which is a 50 50 chance of hitting, that is what the Tau hit on without marker lights. And that is army wide, except for commanders, long strike and specific characters flat across the entire army. So you have a 50-50 chance of hitting. And yes, some of our weapons are powerful, but the chance of actually hitting with them is very low. Versus you look at the Votan and the Votan, which just came out, they hit on threes. So their chances of hitting go up. So it's three, four, five, and six. So they miss on a one or two. And they have just as much of heavy hitting shots as the Tau do but they have melee, the Tau hit on four. So Tau only shoot and they have a 50-50 chance of missing. So that's where I come from when I say they're not the best shooting army. It takes a lot of skill to actually win with Tau. And I know this because I haven't won a lot with Tau. Yeah. Uh, next one up, I'm guessing a special gene was just another of the God Emperor's projects. So this is on the Sisters of Silence. Uh, no, I don't think it was a special God Emperor project because the pariah gene pops up across the galaxy and was popping up at the same time that psychers were actually showing up across the galaxy as well. And in the lore, there is only a few different, there, there are a few different ALEs, uh, like genetics, like representations that show up and actually create the nulls. So unless, of course, the God Emperor was actually teleporting across the galaxy and had seeded it or seeded it during the Dark Age of technology or had done something, um, I don't think it was him because it might have been one genetic thing, uh, representation that actually caused the pariah gene. But multiple things, probably not the God Emperor. Uh, on the Sisters of Silence one, head canon, some sisters take their vows to tattoo seriously and not even growl in pain or speak in their thoughts. Uh, yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Uh, some of them don't, uh, but it is when sisters actually speak with one another and they gossip, they actually laugh, which I was really surprised about. I thought they even tried to make sure they don't laugh, but they do, they will growl, they will make other noises. They just don't speak. But the laughing part is really funny because they're doing sign language, crazy, 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 crazy. And it's just, if you're a normal person, it's just silent. And then it's like a bunch of girls at Starbucks all looking down at their phones. And then they all start cackling with together one at once, like, ha, 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 ha. And then you go back to texting, like, what just happened? Next up, tell girlfriend, would you still love me if I was a worm? Inquisitor, yes. No. He, he would. He loves his wormy. He loves his wormy bro. And that is the last comment. Uh, oh, oh boy. Um, uh, yeah. 
that was a lot. And there's still more comments that I could go through. Like, people, people like commenting on shorts. It's quite incredible. Um, if you want me to do more of this, like, uh, comment, obviously, because I know you will comment. People, holy crap. Um, if you want to watch more, you can take a look at the episode that I just put up earlier this week, uh, which is the Backstone Pylons, uh, discussing that. If you really liked this, uh, you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash in real lore um, and join the live stream because everything that is super chatted in the live stream is actually going towards my wife getting a warlord titan. No, it wasn't my idea. Legitimately, she wants to build a warlord titan. She just wants the biggest mick possible. So if you want to support us, do it through the Patreon. And if you want to make sure she gets a warlord titan, join the live streams and donate and super chat there. Uh, for now, take a look at that video and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.